Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Rob Riches. Here's your news now. As college students, we always look for ways to save money wherever we can. Let's check in with Beth Bethany Beganho as she talks to Dr. Caroline Nielsen about how to save gas during this winter season. Hi, I'm Bethany Bigginho, live from Location, and I'm here to talk with Dr. Karen Nielsen about the best ways to conserve gas during the cold winter season. There are lots of ways to save gas by carpooling or um, walking or riding your bike when you can, but there are a couple that are really specific to the cold winter months. One is making sure your tires are full. Your car operates much more efficiently when the tires are at the correct tire pressure. Um, and another is scheduling your trips so that you do as many things at once as possible rather than letting the car cool down in between trips. So if you can go to the store and the library and the mall all in one trip, uh, the car will run much more efficiently because it's already warm. So whenever the car is idling, it's using gas. And so I think the recommendation is that if you're going to be sitting still for more than a minute, it's more efficient to turn the car off than to just let it idle. So using the air conditioner does use extra energy, uh, much more so than running the heat. The heater is just using heat from the car's engine, um, but the air conditioner has a compressor in it that uses extra energy. So you can save a little bit of gas by turning off the air conditioner whenever possible. I'm Bethany Bigginho, and now back to you guys in the studio. Just when you thought they gave up, the 99% showed up to rally and march in Center City. Protesters marched near City Hall, where two people were arrested after tearing down a construction fence near Dilworth Plaza. According to Philly News, police intimidated prote protesters with batons. Occupy protests continue in Philadelphia and other cities. Local students and teachers from Council Rock High School South had their robotics project selected for NASA's microgravity experience program. In just two months, 40 students and five teachers created a device that could be used to check for damage on the outside of a spacecraft. NASA will be testing the prototype next week. Right in the middle of Center City, a cab waiting at a red light was unexpectedly attacked recently. A senior from the University of Pennsylvania, Brian Goldman, was sitting with the taxi window open and was allegedly punched in the face. Around a dozen teens were, hara were harassed and racially insulting the passenger, Goldman. The cab driver managed to fight off the crowd with a tire iron and Goldman ran off. Three teens were arrested later on that day. Just right outside the Wayne Junction train station, police found a man and a woman dead in their Ford Explorer. It was believed to have been a murder-suicide. The 26-year-old woman was shot in the right side of her head, and the 31-year-old man is suggested to have shot himself in the mouth. The identities of the two are still unknown. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go around the nation with Rob. The Republican primary race for president is turning ugly for frontrunners Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich. The favorites exchanged accusations of dishonesty. Gingrich claims Romney is waging a corrupt campaign and declares he is a liar. Even after such brutal accusations, Romney won the vital race over Florida, with the Nevada caucuses coming up next. A sorry David Canterbury apologized to victims in Oregon after attacking three people with Star Wars-inspired lightsabers. The 33-year-old was allegedly swinging the Star Wars lightsabers towards three customers in Toys R Us. He continued swinging outside the store and swung at police. Canterbury was sentenced to 45 days in jail and will undergo a mental health evaluation. He is banned from the toy store. Over winter break, 11 members of the Cabrini community went to Ecuador as part of an immersion trip through campus ministry to experience life in a different country. A student who went on the trip, Danielle Alio, shares her perspective and experiences. The people in Ecuador are extremely friendly, extremely welcoming, very, very loving. Within five minutes, we had neighbors talking to us about you know, personal experiences that really changed them that you would think, wow, like I only know you for five minutes and you're confiding in me with, with this information, with, with your story. And we said, we told them our story. And it was a really cool bonding experience that I'll never forget. We really just lived among the community. We lived with the people of Ecuador, the people of Duran, specifically the city where we stayed. And we just met with them, spoke with them, bonded with them. 
We went to after school programs to play with the kids, to meet the kids. The experience definitely changed me. Maybe not necessarily speaking about like technology and oh, do I use, do I use my phone less? Like no, I still have to use it. It's you know I still need to like look at emails for everyday life and getting on with you know the quickly paced American culture. But it has changed me to where that I do take every day and every minute you know, one second at a time. I would definitely go abroad again on an immersion trip or something like what I did with in Ecuador. Uh, my advice to other students is to take advantage of any immersion trip or trip offered at the school. You have four years to do it. Take advantage of it. You will not regret it. It'll be an experience you'll never forget. Now let's go to Ali for your trip around the world. The fighting in Syria be between Syrian forces and the rebel Free Syria Army continues, leaving behind dead and injured civilians across the nation. The battle has now spread to suburbs right outside the capital of Damascus. Since March, the death toll has reached over 5,000. Activists continue their fight for freedom and battle to take back their neighborhoods. An unusual discovery was made in depths of the Baltic Sea. Swedish treasure hunters were searching for shipwreck and stumbled upon an unidentified flying object. Team leader and commercial diver Peter Lindbergh is skeptical of the UFO looking object and claims they have never found anything like it. Lindbergh's crew plan to revisit the site and continue investigating this mysterious find. An alleged member of the Zetas drug gang, Enrique Flores, was captured by police in northern Mexico. Flores confessed to killing at least 75 people. Most victims were innocent bus passengers pulled off at stops in Carrelvo. Flores admitted to torturing, maiming, and then killing his victims. Authorities continue vigorous efforts to keep innocent victims safe from such gangs. Let's head to Jimmy with this week's Tech Connection. Twitter created a controversy last week by announcing in an official blog post that it will start censoring tweets in certain countries. Citing that France and Germany both openly ban pro-Nazi rhetoric, Twitter said it can now delete content on a country-by-country -country basis instead of on a worldwide scale. The post went on to say that Twitter defends and respects each user's voice and it will be transparent when censorship does occur. Is Facebook finally going public? According to Dow Jones Newswires, Facebook is planning to file for its initial public offering as soon as this Wednesday, February 1st. Global financial services firm Morgan Stanley is expected to win the deal to lead the much-anticipated IPO. The most interesting bit of news is that Facebook has been valued at a lofty $75 to $100 billion. The IPO is expected to generate as much as $10 billion, making it the biggest internet IPO in U.S. history and the largest global technology IPO as well. That's all I have for now. I'll stay plugged in right here to bring you the latest tech news. Now back to Ali and Rob. Let's check in with Mary Kate for this week's sports update. The Battle of Eagle Road was both upsetting and uplifting. The Cabrini College women's basketball team fell short to the Eagles 61-51. to The loss drops the Cavaliers to 7-13 overall. As for the men's basketball team, they were able to defeat Eastern University on their home court 82-76. to The Cavs ranked number 7 improved their record to 19-1 overall. Cabrini has maintained possession of the Battle of Eagle Road victory the last three seasons. The first day of practice for spring sports is approaching. The January 2012 issue of Lacrosse Magazine ranks the Cabrini College Lacrosse team number 16 in its preseason Division III poll. Three-time All-CSAC First Team performer John McSorley was named a preseason Second Team All-American. On February 5, 2012, kickoff for the 46th annual Super Bowl is scheduled for 6:30 at the Lucas Oil Stadium. The Giants and Patriots are facing off for the NFL Championship. The Patriots are out for revenge for losing to the New York 17-14 four years ago. You don't want to miss this rematch. That's all I have for you this week. Now back to the news desk. Now let's go to Felicia with your entertainment update. Hey guys, it's Felicia here with your entertainment news. This week was full of fashion, music, and topless Kardashians. This week at the SAG Awards, the stars brought out their best fashion. Leah Michelle wore a silver gown with an oh-so-high slit that showed every bit of her dancing leg. 
Viola Davis looked divine in her gown by Marchesa, and my absolute worst of the night was Shane Lee Woolley, who wore a long, overly colorful gown that did not show her young Hollywood figure at all. Also this week, Madonna announced that she would be premiering a preview for her new music video after American Idol this Thursday for her new single titled, Give Me All Your Lovin'. All you Madonna fans out there, I hope you're ready. I know I am. Last but not least, the Kardashians went topless in an ad for their new denim line for Sears. Check out the beauties as they bear it all in fitting jeans that quote unquote will hug your curves and complement your figure while remaining affordable and comfortable to wear. Well, that is all I have for your entertainment news. Back to the news desk. Let's go to Melissa for our person of the week. Hi, I am Melissa Webb, and for person of the week, I have Stephanie Reed. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So, in 2008, when you first came to Cabrini, you were in the co-op's career services, correct? Yes, that's right. And now you're in student diversity. Mm -hmm. So what made you make that change? Um, I had opportunities to do extra things outside of my role as assistant director. There was an opportunity in the student diversity office for a director. I was kind of invited to apply and then went through the actual interview process and here I am as the director of student diversity uh, three years later. So do you have any main focuses or goals? Yes, my office is in place um, to serve as a resource for students um, of color, specifically um, African American and Latino students right now. Um, but the overarching goal of the Student Diversity Office is to create a campus that's more inclusive um, and to create a community um, on campus. Have they have any plans for any events this semester? I'm the advisor for six clubs out of the Student Diversity Office two of which um, have major events planned for this semester. Um, Moda Dal Vivo is the fashion club. Um, they're holding um, their first major fashion show on Saturday, March 24th. And then I also advise the Cabrini Steppers who are holding um, their annual major step show on March 29th. So March will be an exciting month for us. Also in March, you're planning a trip to D.C. My office, the Office of Student Diversity, is planning to um, travel to D.C. to view the MLK Monument, which is a national monument now. Um, we're also going to um, attend an exhibit at the Smithsonian Institute on the same day. So it's open to all students, and if you're interested, they can sign up in the Student Diversity office. Well, I look forward to joining those events as well. Check out uh, more information in student diversity. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Allie Jader. And I'm Rob Riches. Have a great week, Cabrini.